Good morning. Church day, Wednesday, praise the Lord, midweek, halfway fill up, <laughs> recharge, whatever you want to call it. Time to go to church tonight, get filled up, get ready to go again the rest of the week. Hump day, whatever they want to call it. It's church day. I'm looking forward to church tonight. I'm looking forward to being back around God's people, being in the presence of the Lord with his people gathered together, assembled together, the scriptural biblical word for that, assembled together, provoking one another, <laughs> provoking one another unto love and good works. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Miss Terry. Good morning, Brother Ken, Miss Susan. Hope y'all doing well. <clears throat> the throat is a little better, maybe. Uh, we'll find out. <laughs> <coughs> and the cough is up and down. Just depends on what's going on and what's happening. Second, First Timothy chapter number three. First Timothy chapter number three today. We're doing our one a day vitamin, one chapter a day, little devotion where we just kind of really just skim through the, through, through the chapters. One chapter at a time. We're in First Timothy chapter three this morning. And, uh, Looking forward to what God's going to give us. Every chapter in the Bible is important. Every chapter in the Bible is God breathed. Every chapter in the Bible is given for our learning, our growth, our instruction. Every chapter. Not every chapter is for our um, practice. We're not burning bulls and goats. We're not not feathering and, and burning turtle doves uh, for the Lord. We do that for us now. <laughs> and so we're looking forward to that. Good morning, Brother Benny. Good morning, Brother Joey. Hope everybody's doing well. I'm going to try to tear it up. That's what I'm going to do. Amen. Try to make it a little better anyway. It's a little shaky this morning. That's not better. That's not better. So that one of the big heads. <laughs> that might be. Praise the Lord. All right. <clears throat> it's a little shaky this morning. A little coffee. <sighs> coffee like cough, not coffee like drink. And uh, so we'll, we'll be all right. Praise the Lord. God's been good to us. And I got no complaints. This thing's messed up again. Am I better? Somebody wanted to know. Uh, better than what? <laughs> I'm better than most. <laughs> oh, you know, if you know me, you know, I don't even believe that. But yes, I am, I'm in some ways better in some ways. I'm still waiting on my doctor to call me back. I called yesterday to find out if I need to go in. The main thing I want to know is, am I contagious? Um, I don't want to share this with everybody at church. I, I do, I do have a concern for other people. Uh, I was told Monday, what is today? Wednesday. I was told Monday when they did this surgery that everybody had it. They didn't think it was contagious, but that was a dermatologist. Uh, <laughs> that was not my regular doctor. And, uh, they, they said that everybody's got this stuff going around and they, they really don't think that it's, contagious. So they had me come in the office, didn't wear a mask, and I mean they just come in and get all in your grill and do do what they gotta do. So then as I've got a little bit worse, I I I'm just concerned about people at church. So I'm waiting on my doctor to call me back to see if they want to see me or call something in or whatever they're gonna do. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm supposed to do. That's all I know to do. First Timothy, chapter number three. Let's read this morning. Good to see everybody. Good morning, Miss Kathy. <laughs> I'm here, but I'm slow. <laughs> you, you, you'll keep up real well. <coughs> cough drops wearing off. You know, I can't talk and chew on a cough drop. So we're just going to bear with it and keep going. All right. First Timothy, chapter number three. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, 
the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how should he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Likewise, must the deacons be grave and not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in pure conscience, and let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a de deacon being found blameless. Even so must their wives be grave, not slander, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own houses well. <coughs> For they that have used the office of a deacon well, purchased to themselves a good degree and a great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. These things write I unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in the glory. Paul writes to Timothy, his young convert, his young protege, his young assistant. Paul writes to Timothy, morning, Brother Jeff Edwards. Good to see you. I haven't seen you on here in the mornings. Praise the Lord. Who woke you up this morning? <laughs> Amen. Sally. <laughs> if I take this bandage off, I do have a black eye and a cut. <laughs> but uh, they just took a little skin cancer. That's my brother-in-law. Brother Jeff, and uh, glad to see you here today. First Timothy chapter 3, Paul continues his instruction given to Timothy. Timothy has been left uh, to preach, to set in order, to guide. The Bible says in chapter number 1 and verse 3, Now I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia that I might have charged some that they teach no other doctrine. And so he's given instruction to Timothy what he should teach, what he should do, how he should behave. All these things are being given. Dr. Harold Wilmington, some people will watch this and say, well, I don't like Wilmington. He did this, he did that. I'm afraid that if anybody really knew and looked at all our lives, that all of us have got something. <laughs> and I don't, I don't stand with Dr. Wilmington on everything he taught, everything he believed. I don't stand with anybody except Jesus. <laughs> on everything they talk about. Uh, but Dr. Wilmington outlined chapter number three like this. He said, first of all, there's the shepherds. And he talks about the qualifications of the, the bishops, the shepherds. Then he talks about the sheep in verse 14 and 15 and how they ought to behave in the house of God. And then he talks about the Savior in verse 16. That's a pretty good outline, pretty good breakdown of of. First Timothy chapter number three. When you look at chapter number three, he says right off the bat, if a man desire the office of a bishop, <coughs> I'm a, I guess I'm, I'm a little weird. I guess some of the things I say here, some of you will just cut me off and, and write me off and be done with it. I'm glad Jesus doesn't. I'm glad he still loves me. I'm glad he still uses me. I'm glad he's still got a purpose. And a reason, the Bible says, if a man desire the office of a bishop, uh, my family grew up, my daddy, my mama grew up in Hazelhurst, Georgia, Lumber City, Georgia. And I don't have the name and I wouldn't use it if I had it. But there was a man they grew up with that went into the ministry uh, in his late high school, college days, early college days. He went off to seminary and became uh, a pretty well known to us because he grew up in that area with them. He was pretty well known to us, but he was a, 
a Methodist preacher. And I read one of his books after I got saved. I, I, I purposely went and found, and I read one of the books that, that this man wrote. And he was, he was a well-known man. He pastored out in Texas and, and, and was there for a long time and probably a good man. But here's what he said about his call to preach. He said what, I, and I promise you, he wrote it down. It was in writing. It wasn't hearsay. It wasn't, it wasn't gossip. He wrote this his own self and published and had his book published. He said that one day as a young man, early teens, somewhere in that area, he was in the bathroom. And I, I'll be polite. He was on the toilet <laughs> and doing his business. <laughs> and he said, God spoke to him audibly out loud. And he heard a voice that told him that he was to be a preacher. Um, <laughs> I could go a lot of ways right here. <clears throat> the Bible says, if a man desire the office of a bishop. Now, if, if you think different than me, tell me what you believe. Tell me what you think. We believe in sufficiency of the scripture. We believe in the inerrancy of the scripture. This Bible is complete. It, it, it's full. God spoke through the, his word. And yet, we say, when we try to convince somebody that we're called to preach, we say, well, I had this, this experience. I had this almost out of body. We mock and make fun and ridicule and rebuke the charismatics when they say they heard a voice or God gave them a word or, or here's your word for it, extra biblical revelation outside the Bible. Revelation. We, we, we don't believe in that. The Bible doesn't teach that. God gave us the word and then <clears throat> those sign gifts were done away. Those miracle gifts that they were done away because we don't need those anymore because now we have the word of God. I believe that when a man calls, when, when God calls a man to preach, he puts a desire in his heart. The Bible says <clears throat> in Psalm 37, 4, and I can't quote it, it's gone this morning. But the Bible says that if you delight yourself in the Lord, that he will give you the desires of your heart. I know pastors, I know preachers, I know evangelists that say, well, I have this, this, this experience. I have this voice. God told me I was going to be a preacher. If that's the way you want to go, then go. But I'm going to tell you what God did for me. God put a desire in my heart. God put a hook in my heart and, and drew me. I went to my pastor and I said, I want to do and, and preach and tell. I want, I've got a desire. I can't quit. I can't quit because that desire is still there. I'm here this morning because that desire is still there. I'm up this morning when I really don't want to be up. I'm talking when I really don't want you to hear me. And it don't hurt. It, it, no, no pain. It just sounds bad. <laughs> it never does look good. <laughs> but I'm here because God put a desire in my heart. <clears throat> I'm still pastoring today because God put a desire in my heart. And he has not taken that away. <laughs> Jeremiah said, I'm not going to speak. I'm not going to mention his name. I'm done. These people are driving me crazy. Jeremiah said, I know. No, I'm not going to do it anymore. <laughs> and then he said, but God's word was in my bones burning. <laughs> he said, it's burning. I can't quit. He had a desire. God gave him a desire. If any man, if a man desire the office of a bishop, here's the next part. He desireth a good work. <laughs> bishop, pastor, elder, three words for the same office. Bishop, pastor, elder, three words for the same thing. We're talking about the pastor of the church. Bishop, pastor, elder, three three words for the same office in the church. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work, and it is work. It is work. We laugh, we joke, 
we, we say, well, the preacher don't work for two days a week. <laughs> uh, yeah. <coughs> okay. Praise the Lord. If you believe that, you go ahead. Here's what God said, the guidelines, the qualifications for a bishop, for a pastor, for an elder. A bishop then must be blameless. Blameless. The husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, outside the church, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. <coughs> you, you see, <coughs> it's getting worse. You see these, um, qualifications. Most people will focus on one of these. Most people will, will pinpoint one of these. You hear more about husband and one wife than you do all the rest of them put together. And, and people focus on that and people point their fingers. If you decide you're called to preach, you're going to have to deal with that verse. If God puts a desire in your heart, you're going to, have to deal with that verse. You're going to have to deal with your own conscience. You have to deal with your conscience. You're going to have to deal with the crowd that, that you're around. You have to deal because people are going to put you down. People are going, going to attack you. People are going, going to categorize you. People are going to classify you, and 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 they'll do that. And and you just have to deal with it. And then the last thing is, and most of all, you deal with with your conscience. You deal with the crowd, but most of all, you got to deal with Christ. What does Christ say? What does the Lord do? And what does he do in your heart? People have spread rumors about me and talked about me. I've only been married one time. I got one wife who in the world would ever want more than one. <laughs> I got the best one. I got the best one right from the very beginning. I ain't trading. I told her the other day, she, we were talking and talking about somebody that got remarried and 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 after their wife passed away, and I said, not me, not me. I'm glad for them. I'm happy for them. That's their life. They can do that. They got the right to do that. I'm glad they're happy. But me, no, I will not get married again. My mom, I'm too much like my mama. I, my wife tells me, my, my wife, I ought not tell you all this, but I'll say something and my wife will look at me and she'll call me Jackie. She'll say, all right, Jackie, <laughs> because I, I sound like my mama. I'm saying exactly what my mama would say. And, and I'm just repeating my mama. She could say, all right, Jackie. <laughs> and, and my mama, when, when my mama, when my daddy died, my mama said, I had my, my man. I had my husband. I had my, my mate. That's my spouse. That's my wife. She actually had men from the church that would come and try to date her. And she had a man come by one day for this hilarious. Man, good, good man, nothing wrong with him. Just not my mama. <laughs> and I don't, it wouldn't have mattered to me if, if she dated or got married. I wouldn't have cared. But she said, no, I had the one. This man came by the house and knocked on the door and said, Miss Jackie, w would you mind if I washed your car? And she said, no, I wouldn't mind if you washed my car. That would be very nice of you. And he said, would you mind if I take you to dinner after I get through? And she said, yes, I will not go to dinner with you. I would mind. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere with you. But if you want to watch the car, you go ahead. <laughs> I don't think he did. <laughs> Listen, I'm too much like my mama. I, if something happens, I ain't getting married again. I've had one. I've had the best. I've had the only one I ever want. She's absolutely... If, if, if I, if I'm here when she's gone, I don't know what I'll do, but I, I ain't going and looking for another one. I really ain't husband of one wife. Some people say that that's one life, one wife for a lifetime. 
as some people say, that's one wife at a time. You deal with your conscience, you deal with your crowd, and most of all, you deal with Christ. And you settle that in your heart. You do that. I'm not going to throw rocks at you. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to do that. I'm just not. Me, one wife, for life, that's all. There's a lot of ways we could go with this if y'all want to go. But when you look at this, husband of one wife, vigilant, vigilant. Watching, looking, paying attention, aware of what's going on around him. Sober, serious-minded, serious-minded, of good behavior, <laughs> given to hospitality, given to hospitality, loves to have people come, loves to be good to people, loves to entertain people and, 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 and accept people, not, not put on a show but be hospitable to people, apt to teach. This is the one thing that's not in the qualification for the deacons. The pastor has to be apt to teach. He has to be able, but he also has to, to enjoy teaching and, and, and spreading the word, not giving the wine, <clears throat> not giving the wine. I read several different commentaries, and, and some of them said, that, that a little wine was okay. And some of them said, no wine. I'm going to tell you what I think. It just, just common sense. Look at what alcohol does and look at what the Bible says about alcohol. The Bible says you're not even supposed to look upon the wine when it moveth itself aright. I, I had a friend before I got saved that would, they had grape vines and, and a grape arbor and, and he would pick those grapes and he would, mash those grapes and he had those big five gallon water jugs and he would put that that grape juice in there and he would put the yeast and whatever you're supposed to put in it and then he would cork it up <laughs> and and it had a vent that where it vented off and you could watch that wine roll and move as it fermented it would move itself in that jug you don't shake the jug as it fermented it began to move the bible says you're not even supposed to look on the wine how can you drink it? it? When it's fermented, when it's strong drink, we can spend the rest of the week and next week studying alcohol and studying the, 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 the effects of it. I think the only time, the only time that the Bible okays the use of, of fermented alcoholic strong drink was when somebody was dying, somebody was sick, somebody was depressed and, and, and in the, in, on their deathbed. They said, give them a little wine. Paul told Timothy, take a little wine for thy stomach's sake. That's, that's grape juice. That I had a doctor tell me one time that, that even today for ulcers and stomach problems, that grape juice was very, very effective and calming for the stomach. And so not giving the wine, no striker, not greedy or filthy lucre, but patient. <laughs> <laughs> we just disqualified every preacher I know. Patient? <laughs> really? <laughs> we just disqualified every man of God I've ever been around. <laughs> Patient. <laughs> not a brawler. Not covetous. Here's the one that I think probably, it, it, what, they're all equal. They're all Im important. One that ruleth well his own house. Having his children in subjection with all gravity. How you say, but my, my kids, I, I don't have control. I can't, and the, the, the Bible doesn't say you can't preach. The Bible says you can't be the bishop. You can't be the pastor. You can preach, but you're not qualified to pastor the church. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children all subjection. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? And the pastor has to do that. Not a novice, not a beginner, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into condemnation of the devil. A beginner is more apt to believe that, boy, we're really doing this. <laughs> Something's really happening and get prideful. When you've been doing this 30 years, all of a sudden you begin to realize, <laughs> you know, we've been here before and this whole thing could come falling down around me if God don't touch it, if God don't bless it. And, and you, <laughs> 
pride, pride gets beat out of you somewhere along about 20 years. <laughs> pride gets this stuff and gets beat out of you. And, and you just say, oh God, please, please God, let this work. Not a novice. Um, verse number seven, moreover, we must have a good report of them, which are without. I've heard pastors say, I don't care what them people out there think. I don't care what my neighborhood, I don't care what my, my friend, I don't care what my neighbors think. Well, the Bible says you're supposed to. You're supposed to have a good report of them which without, outside the church, those that aren't saved, lest he fall into reproach in the snare of the devil. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy or filthy lucre, uh, holding the mystery of the faith in pure conscience. The Bible says, let these also be, be first be proved, and then let them use the office of a deacon, being found blameless. They're, they're to be tested. They're to be tried. Prove me now herewith, God said, test me. We're to test the deacons. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderous, sober, faithful in all things. Uh, I, my pastor told me years ago there's no qualifications on the pastor's wife. I think maybe verse number 11 fits both of them. Pastor's wife should be grave, not a slander. Sober, serious-minded, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children in their own house as well. For they that have used the office of a deacon, here's a verse that might throw you, well purchased to, will, that used the office of a deacon well, purchased to themselves a good degree and a great boldness in the faith. They're not purchasing salvation, but they are working and earning rewards and, 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 and the favor of God. The, the salvation is a gift, but here they're earning, they're working, they're doing a good job, and, and, and they're, they're serving, and so they're going to be rewarded for that. These things run unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry, he said, now he goes into talking about not the shepherds, but the sheep. He starts talking about the sheep. He said, I'm writing, and he said, I hope to come. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. You, you say, preacher, there's no truth in the world. Where's the church? The church is the pillar and the ground. The church is is the standard. The church is the, the bearing of, of the truth. And it's our job to hold up the truth. It's our job to lift up the truth. And, and the church has got to stand. The church has got to speak. The church has got to, 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 to spread the truth. We've got to say it. You've got to stand against evil. We went through a period of time in church where, where everybody said, well, I'll just do right. If it ain't in my house, it don't affect me. I'll just do right. I'll raise my family. I'm not concerned. I can't change all them. And the truth is, the truth is that we are to be rebuking evil. We're to be standing, resisting evil. We have to do that. So then it goes on. It says without verse 16, it, it, verse 14, 15, 6, verse 14, 15, he talks to the sheep, and then he talks about the Savior. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Basically, verse 16, the gospel. It's the gospel. Here's the birth, the, 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 the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ the things that went on around him. And, and that is the answer for it all. You come back to Jesus. I will say this. First John chapter number one and verse number seven says that the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, if I get it wrong, y'all forgive me. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. All sin. That's what Christ said. That's what Jesus said. First John 1 9 said, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. <coughs> when it comes to the qualifications for a pastor, we need to inspect ourselves and we need to be forgiven. Because I don't know anybody that doesn't have something on that list in their past. In their past. 
but I'm thankful for the salvation of the Lord. And I'm thankful for the new birth. And I'm thankful that I'm a new creature in Christ. And when he moved in, there's a whole bunch of stuff had to move out. (laughs) And when he put it behind his back, he didn't just forgive it. He forgot it. The Bible says that he is faithful and just. He cleanses, he forgives and and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. It's gone. I'm thankful for the work of God. Amen. I don't know how long we've been on here. I got to get me a clock in here. I don't have a clock in this room. But praise the Lord. I hope you have a great day today. Go to church. Get in church. (laughs) Praise the Lord. God's been good to us. I can't tell who's watching. I'm sitting too far away. <clears throat> Miss Kathy, good to see you. Uh, I think I said all that. Mr. Reese, call me and let me know how things are going. And, uh, just to, don't, don't put it on here. Just send, just call me or send me a message. And, uh, we've been praying. I didn't get the message till three o'clock this morning, but, uh, we're doing that. Praise the Lord. But Benny, I don't want to preach on behaving nowhere. I like to misbehave. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> all right, Brother Trey, good to see you. I was looking to see who all's on here. Brother Andy Wells, praise the Lord. That's a preacher. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I love Brother Andy's uh, podcast and the things he does. And uh, I just need him to send me some of that coffee. <laughs> they try out different coffees on their podcast and they preach the gospel. Can you imagine the, the word of God and different kind of coffees that they, yeah, that's a real podcast. I don't have all that here today. I hadn't even made coffee this morning. I didn't make any coffee because I had, um, I had, um, uh, um, cinnamon apple hot tea. Does that sound like reprobate? <laughs> hot tea, cinnamon apple and, um, honey and apple cider vinegar. A whole bunch of apple cider vinegar just (laughs) poured it in that cup full of tea. And it's cut some of this stuff. Um, I think it cut some of the vocal cords too. (laughs) But anyway, praise the Lord. I'm fixing to go make some coffee. Amen. Why is a man, why is a husband making the coffee? Hebrews. Hebrews, not (laughs) Shebrews. Amen. All right, we'll see y'all tomorrow. Y'all have a great day. Go to church.